Uh, my name's David Ian Brown, um, 29, from Scotland, UK, um, and I studied contemporary art in Aberdeen, kind of the north of Scotland. So um, I was there for four years, and I stayed on to do my masters for one year, and then I moved to Glasgow, which is kind of the centre of um, Scotland. How old were you? Like maybe tell me how you grew up. What made you want to get into art? Were you always passionate about that, or how did you get involved with art? It was kind of my two passions were sports and art and I kind of just went down the more the art route. I decided to go to college. I was there for, I actually originally went so the, so I could draw better to then become a tattoo artist. Um, and then when I went to the course I just fell in love with kind of the whole process of uh, printmaking, sculpture, ceramics. And from there I kind of just stayed for two years at college and then I decided to go into um, do my BA honours degree at um, Aberdeen, Grey School of Art. So that was it. That was a kind of starting point. And then when I went to art school, um, just kind of fell in love with uh, print making. So um, mainly screen printing, silk screen print for me anyway. As a kid, were you someone that was able to really express yourself, or was it through the, your art that was what made you feel like that was your voice, that was your expression, or was it just? Um, I don't know, was it inspiration? Yeah, as a kid, um, we weren't, I wouldn't say, I was, I'm from a small fishing village anyway, so there's not really any art seen there at all. And we had um, someone visit and she was an artist and she was kind of talking to the kids and saying, like, if you keep on pushing and keep on going, you'll probably be able to go to art school. And um, that was the one kind of thing that switched for me where um, that one person kind of said, okay, you could do this, rather than it being just like, from, from where I'm from, it's like you, the generic, you become like an electrician or a joiner or stuff like that. So going down the arts route is still a little bit different and people still th find it a bit weird. Inspiration for you, like your, your artwork, like was it from things you saw? Was it things in your head or what did you want to recreate? What was your vision? Maybe a, a bit of both. Um, so when I left art school, I've I, I I, I, I only done a little bit of painting, but everyone in my studio, like all my friends, are, they're painters, so it was just inevitable that I would become a painter and dabble in painting. So um, coming to Glasgow, I wanted to go to the print studio, but it's quite expensive just to just to buy all your materials, and I didn't have that a bit of money, so um, I just decided to paint, and then I just kind of fell in love with that. I've done photography, sculpture. Um, printmaking, like all about ex experimentation. Um, I was basically extracting kind of colour, form uh, from kind of my surroundings, my everyday surroundings. So um, for me, that's where it kind of started. And now it's all about kind of building up layers and textures and maybe just keep on working and pushing to develop and see how it can go. Like, I'm still, I'm still evolving and the work's still changing gradually and over during like lockdown I've been in the studio pretty much the whole time so um, and working part time but in the studio maybe like four or five times a week uh, for the past six, seven months so my work's kind of been pushed quite far in the past half year to quarter of a year but I think like my scale I, uh, I scaled right down to making little 15 centimetre by 19 centimetre pieces just because you, you couldn't really get materials that easy during lockdown because it would take weeks or months uh, to come. So I just used what I had and kind of just repurposed it. So I do that with the canvas where you can see sections of canvas that have been glued on. It's kind of repurposing old, old work to make something new from, from something that someone might think you can chuck it away, you know? your process, like the day, like when you come in to like start your <clears throat> piece or whatever, what's, yeah. like do you put a certain song on, like what's, how do you set up your whole mood, is it hours, is it, what is yeah, it Yeah, like? it depends, like so, most days I'll come in, I'll, I'll get the laptop on and I'll plug into the speakers, because we've got speakers in the studio, so I'll plug it on and depends, I might listen to a podcast that's maybe art related, or sometimes it's not even art related at all, like Joe Rogan, or something completely different um, or music wise maybe Spotify and I'll, it's it's just a kind of daily playlists that are kind of linked to me so um, it could be rock one day 
another deck could be like house or tech so it's just, it's just a that is a mix yeah. and then that's the kind of starting point i'll see what's in my space and I'll, I'll just start to look at it and i can see maybe where something could go like so a, a layer of canvas or spray paint and then i'll just start building up that way um and with, with colors it's more kind of intuitive so i'll see what's in the canvas and if there's a hint of color i'll kind of say like a small bit of pink then i'll use pink spray paint or oil bar or oil paint so um it's, it's kind of I, I do react to the pieces and what, what's around me quite a bit in the studio with that the, the work looks each piece is individual but they they all become kind of really cohesive as well because there's colors jumping between piece to piece what's your like goal or dream like i know just creating art like the rest of your yeah. life what do you hope to i don't know um, accomplish or anything like that professional in my practice will like get a, 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 a website that's kind of professional it's clean it's easy to go about and um to hit 10,000 followers on instagram that was just a small goal um and for that reason as well, it's like when you get to 10,000, you can get the swipe up feature. So it's a lot easier to link my website and um, galleries and stuff um, that might show my work, you know. So that's the goal. Yeah. But long term, I don't know. Like, I don't want to like a lot of people go to I do massive like Warhol and stuff. Like, I'm happy to just slowly and gradually get my work out there and for. for if people want to buy it, they'll buy it. Um, I'm happy if it's going to a home, you know, but um, yeah, I just want to travel a bit and see different parts of the world. Just coming from a small fishing village, people don't really have that many high, um, high expectations of you, really, um, which is a shame, but I think people seeing the, the amount of time I've put in, putting it into something you love, you know. That I, people, I, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that people might think it's like a hobby or I don't know. They don't think it's a real job or whatever. Whatever art it is, it's kind of, mm -hmm. it's not always consistent, or there's always yeah. going to be these things, but if you love it, it's like, that's your life, that's your job, and I, yeah. and I feel like as artists, you always have to just keep growing and going, and, and it's not always going to be easy, but I think that's why not yeah. everyone does it, and I feel like it's not for everybody. No, I know my tutor, he was saying like, it's, it's going to be a bumpy road, and it's got its ups and it's got its downs, so like, one month you'll do amazing, you'll be a couple of sales and you'll be maybe speaking to a gallery and then the next two months it's just like nothing's happening and then you're like, what's, you, you might wonder what's going on um, so you might tend to try and change things up but I think if you just stick to what you've been doing prior, it's, it'll be fine things will, things will pop up and things will happen if you keep on putting the work out there I know we're kind of talking about how a lot of times um art isn't always consistent or you might have your ups and downs why do you why do you need to do this in your life or why do you feel the arts are, is so important just in life and in the world why do we need it for me it's to like make something that could just like change someone's what one part of their day or um like it'll brighten their day up a lot of people say like my pieces kind of they're bright and they they'll make a kind of a rainy day better you know so um, for me, I, I just wipe out a little bit of positivity in the world and um, for people to um, look at the work and just always look at it, you know, so they might notice smaller things within the work each day, every time they're looking at it, so they're kind of growing and learning about the work. Artwork gets people to look at things and challenge things, you know, it, it, if, if, if we didn't have art or music or dance, I, I think the world would be a sad and, I don't know, a pretty bleak place. It would be great. I don't know if, what people. I don't even know. I can't. I can't imagine a world without it. You know. I know. I. It's the same thing. I feel like so many out here in the U.S. I mean, so many of the mm -hmm. art programs are getting cut. Like it's all they don't have it, and I feel like it's so yeah, needed. Funding like and stuff. Said, yeah. It just unites us and it makes us see things from a different perspective and understand people. You know, yeah. and vulnerability. And yeah, because like I've got a friend who's like a contemporary dancer, and like you just you just share well with other creatives I think because um, everyone's in the same boat and we're all passionate about what we do and we, we look at someone else and we totally respect that they're in the same thing they're, they're doing what they love to do and they're trying to make a living of it um, so yeah, it's, it's a positive thing
really like to be consistent and to find a group of artists who are um, kind of similar. Like, so I'm an abstract painter. Um, a lot of the people I follow and speak to their abstract painters as well. Um, so build a kind of small community who can, you can support each other. And um, yeah, just like even on social media and in your own hometown or wherever, um, do the same thing. Find people who kind of bring you up and they, they you can all help each other kind of push and motivate each other. Because we all have like our ups and downs. One day you might feel highly motivated and other days you might not. Or even if you've not got a studio space, like just go to galleries, other expo, maybe not at the moment, but when maybe all this passes, you can you can meet people and talk about art. And, you know, I just think you just have to be around creative people um, always, you know, because there was a point where I, I didn't have a studio and I was just in my bedroom painting and you get in your own head and it's just like you think this isn't good enough or, but I think like surround yourself with positive people um, who want to kind of do better and that'll make you want to do better and they'll push you while you push them and that would be my advice. Because I think you need that, especially as an artist, because we do get in our heads a lot and where we yeah. second guess ourselves and doubt. And I think the best yeah. art is that freedom where it's just there and you mm. don't think about it. Um, yeah, totally. And I think the like, social media is maybe bad for that because you're seeing so many people posting like really frequently every day, twice a day, and you might feel that urge and the rush to make artwork really fast because social media is a fast paced kind of app. So um, I tell people to just kind of slow down but you can still show people the process of everything on your stories uh, just just don't feel that urge to post seven times a week or whatever you know maybe one or twice because your, your followers your followers your followers will keep on coming back for the work just like maybe just fun questions for people to get to know you like what yep. are some hobbies that you like to do when you're not painting um i used to go um hill walking a lot with my grandfather um and but he's getting a bit older and I, I, I went to art school so I kind of stopped it but I love doing that you know like just getting out in, in nature because I take a lot of kind of inspiration for colour from what's around me so if I'm in, in the hillside I'll probably get more kind of greens and stuff coming into into the art worker like I live in a fishing village and it's right next to the sea so there's a lot of different kind of colours but yeah like, I, I like to travel, but obviously haven't been able to travel much recently. Um, I actually was supposed to go to Brussels to go and see a few galleries, but um, I think it was five days before we were going, and they got put on our um, quarantine list. So if I went, I'd be in quarantine for two weeks, and then I'd probably get fired from work. So yeah, Boo. I know. So <laughs> ended up cancelling it, but got all the money back, so it's not too bad. Oh, um, but yeah, like. I don't really, yeah, traveling. I like, I like going to the gym, sports, you know. One thing I did notice when I was at art school, that my, my eyes got opened up to like, seeing like everything. Like you, you, you totally appreciate the like, color. Like I went from Aberdeen down to my hometown on the bus and just, it seemed like the greens were, were more greener and stuff, you know, when I saw it, just cause Aberdeen's a kind of gray city, um, the city's, make basically all granite so um when it's when it's raining and it's dull it becomes really gray um so yeah it's it is weird but people don't people don't interact anymore and it's it's a shame yeah i think it's like that's why i love art whatever mm -hmm. it is because it's like it takes you to s somewhere else you know and yeah like i i get people saying like like a color might trigger a memory or there's a, a section within the work that for me, it's nothing's intentional. It's just like it, things are really organic and they happen, or like colours might merge. And like my grand, she she saw a piece and she thought it was like people running away screaming with their hands in the air. And as soon as she said that, I could see it in the work. And then someone yesterday said that they could see some something else in, in the in the forms. And then now, as soon as they said, it, I can see it. It's it's weird, but I, I'll, I love that. That's, that's what I like, yeah. Like for, for me, abstract art, it, it's about that, like to to transport someone to a memory 
could be in the childhood or a week before or even the color you know so um yeah that that's my kind of my whole goal is to if someone sees a piece and it triggers a memory of happiness or it could be sadness and people people might might need that you know but mainly happiness like i, I want people to be triggered by happy memories or or a location or a or something you know yeah describe yourself in like three words what would you say or your art yourself um, and maybe your art ambitious there's a sense of humor like i'm always kind of wanting to have a laugh and mm -hmm. with people you know so um yeah maybe ambitious kind of humorous and easy going that's me but like the works might be a bit different so it's it's bold and sometimes it's complex um and colorful